Okay, we're back. We're gonna see how long we can go until my phone overheats. So, <clears throat> here's a sink. Cool fixture. I'm realizing as I'm looking at this, that's probably a combination of calcification and toothpaste, so that needs a good cleaning. But that's actually a pretty beautiful sink. Just like the kitchen sink, we figured if we we're gonna live in here, the tiny little RV bathroom sinks are just the worst. So we changed it out, made it pretty, that's nice. Um, you'll see under here the brains. That is a rubber connection that allows it to bounce around in the RV drives, and your hot and cold lines, RV toilet paper, some cleaner stuff. What the hell is this doing in here? Yeah, you shouldn't really be using this in here and we don't have anything stuck in our pipes. Hmm, well, that's in there. What is this? Oh, uh, some command. This is gonna be a bl or commando black tank holding tank cleaner. You always wanna clean out your tank. I'll let you look up whatever videos you want for that. Here's your tank. This goes straight down to the black tank. Black tank, you poop in it. That's where all the nasty smells are gonna come from. So, come out of the bathroom. And what do we see? Right across the way, we see a shower. I've already sent the measurements for this shower. But here it is, I got a medium nice head. It's better than what comes with it, but it's not, you know, the Cadillac of heads. This is a shower, there's really not much to it. You do some showering. I would show you me inside of here, but I don't think I can get the camera set up without the door shutting on me. Um, but it's an RV shower. If I maybe, oh, that's what I should do, I could stand in here. You could see, you know how big I am. I'm six foot, I'm 250. Here I am, let me close the door. Okay, I'm standing here. My elbows are touching both sides of the wall. It's my belly, this is ridiculous. I'm wondering how fat I am. All right, and then here I am sideways. And, okay, I mean, I could put my little arms up and make a little room, but it's an RV shower. There's nothing crazy in here when you do the shower. This little button right here lets you turn the water on and off, right? So you get the water sent to the temp, and this will make it flow, not flow. That way you don't waste water, especially if you're out there boondocking. That's the shower. Uh, when, when you get driving, we like to put that shower head down on the ground. Otherwise, it'll eventually pop out. You turn this hook, and that keeps the door from opening while you're driving, which would not be great. There's a door right here, so you can close off from the front. And now... I'm standing in the master, and this door goes to the front. The next door is right here, so you could really fully isolate the bathroom if you really needed to. Okay. All right, look back here. It looks like we've got some heat getting to the wallpaper. Get some wallpaper glue and put that back up. Keep this place conditioned, and that'll be just fine. But if you're in a hot space without AC, That'll uh, start coming off. So now we get to the master bed. I can't remember what size this is, but I know I've sent dimensions out and I got the dimensions sitting on the table out there. You'll see we've got outlets and lights on either side, USBs to plug in for charging. We put all that in. This is where you'd put your modem if you're gonna have internet living inside of here for any length of time. Did some wallpaper, that's all wallpaper, a little blue wood looking stuff, whatever, little holders. Got a big old TV. This is on a telescoping arm, so it can come out or go back. TV for right here. Really, my youngest daughter watched this more than I did, so I never got to watch any cool shows, which is rough. That dresser, which has, you know, a million drawers. I'll show you how big they are. I'll put the little beer can in there. Okay, so you get an idea of how big that is. But this is where we have three kids, all their stuff lived in there. And over here, a closet stack of drawers inside of your closet, um, two racks to hang all your stuff. I mean, this is set up, you could really hold a lot of clothes in here. I have this open because like I said outside, your diesel's in the back of the RV, so when your mechanic needs to work on it, it's back here, and here's the second one. Okay, we come over here. This is where the washer dryer was, but like I said outside, and pull this out of the way. Like I said outside, this just got in the way. We never used the washer dryer, so we figured we could get extra storage space. So we pulled it out. And then what I did before I found those shutoff valves outside, I capped off these lines and then I put, these are a second set of shutoff valves. So this is all set. If you want to put a washer dryer back in there, you simply pull this hose back up that hole. Bada boom, bada bing, it's on. No big deal. Easy peasy. We didn't 
cut anything out. We just uh, closed it off, but we use this as a storage space. And uh, if I had a guess, uh, most people would rather have it as a storage space. Those washer dryers don't tend to be as useful as you think they're gonna be. More storage space lives up here. I got a vacuum that charges as it sits here. So that little hand vacuum, super duper handy. You'll clean up most of your messes with that. Then we come over here. Oh, you've got a carbon monoxide so that you don't die. It's important. Some more brains, right? This tells you what this is. And then this guy tells you what all these is. Oh my goodness, it's more fuses. It's pretty simple. F. What's a useful one? F13. How do I find F13? Well, I look up here. You see the little Fs above the fuse. 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, of course, it's 13 gonna be over here. It's probably gonna, maybe it's at the bottom. Yes, it's right there. Grab that, cha -ching, pull it out. You can find 10 million YouTube videos that tell you how fuses are good, but if you look here, you can see how that metal inside the middle of a fuse, see that little loop? If that's together and not burnt apart, that means the fuse is good. Okay, probably a little extra. You didn't really need that in a video like this, but here we are. Oh my God, more storage. And then the little bed. You pick this bad boy up. Yeah. And there's a whole host of storage underneath. Those are the motors for your in and out. That guy is a cell phone signal amplifier. I never installed it, but I did pull it out and use it once. And I was able to make business calls in the middle of Death Valley. So needless to say, it works. Close this down. Ba-boom. Okay, last thing that's worth looking at is the brains. Here's your little operation center for everything that you could care about. Tank test. Some of this works, some of this doesn't. So it's telling you your waste and your gray tank are empty, right? Actually, this is really great. It, this used to always read at a third no matter what I did, so it looks like it's reading better. Probably from sitting here and drying out over the past few months. Fresh water, I've got a full tank. Okay, good night, come on Elijah. I got a full tank. Liquid propane, full tank. It'll take you a long time to get out of propane. As I come down, okay, I was pressing this button to get those lights. Water pump, I turn this on when I'm not hooked to water. So if I'm out there boondocking or I don't have an outside water source hooked to me, then I can turn this on and it should make water go, okay? Because what this does is this makes a water pump. So then when I turn a valve, water comes out. Oh, huzzah, it's a miracle, yay. If I shut that water pump off, okay, I'm not, right now I'm not hooked to anything outside, outside water source. Oh no, no more water. That's because the water pump's not there. So the water has no force to push it up the line. So again, if the red light's on, boom, water pump's going, good for you. Water heater, both of these will get the water heater. If you are out there on your own in the middle of nowhere, turn this on. This will use your liquid propane to make your water heater work. If you're hooked up to a system in a campsite, turn this on. Elijah, why didn't it turn on? Because I'm not hooked up. So you turn that on um, and this will make your water heater hot. You give it, I don't know, probably 15, 20 minutes and the water, it'll be hot as hell. Okay, house battery, chassis battery. Remember there was two battery systems. I am plugged in, you want this anywhere over 12 volts. I'm plugged in and I'm looking good. What is this? System heat. This is, uh, if you're out in the middle of snow, you turn this on and it, it'll heat up all your lines and all that kind of stuff. I never use that. These are your slides, slide out controls. If you are plugged in, you want to do this before you unplug from the, uh, the power at the RV park because it uses a ton of power. And if you don't have enough juice in your batteries, it won't go. So you, you may have to turn on your generator to get the power or have it plugged into a source. Um, but these are your, the main is the big guy out there. The alt is the little guy right behind me that I'm sitting on. Oh, I should probably have said that. This is the second slide. You see that wood frame? That whole, all that blue, that section comes all the way back in. Okay, 
this guy is telling you what you're on. You should never have to select this 3020. We are a 50 amp RV, so when you plug into a 50 amp, this will light up. When you plug into 30 amp, this will light up. Um, but one way or the other, all this stuff will light up when you're plugged in. When you're boondocking, this won't light up, or well, your generator could light up, but it'll only go one at a time while it's powering, right? So if I just have my water heater on and no AC, you'll just see this light. Then I come down here. This is for your inverter. I like never really look at this. So actually I don't have a really great way to uh, explain it, but you can't do invert while it's plugged in. And really I think that's it, man. So now I'm gonna go load this up to uh, YouTube. I right, see you later, bye.